All right, we're going to do another part here to the thing on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This one is about the interpretation of verses uh, 6 and 7. Okay, another very important um, argument here that's going on. Uh, a brother recently sent me a thing by Dr. Doug Stauffer, and I think very highly of Doug Stauffer for some of the work that he's done in things, and I'm certainly not going to, you know, I'm not you know, going to attack him or say he's a heretic or anything else like that. But I do disagree with him. He says that the he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way is Michael the Archangel. Okay. And he makes a few errors in his theory. So I'm going to talk about that today. Okay. Um, let's begin here in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Now here's the part we're going to focus on. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. All right. So when is the man of sin revealed, the son of perdition? Now, what Doug Stauffer said, and I listened to this whole study two times, um, he said that the Antichrist is revealed, he's not revealed until halfway through the time of Jacob's trouble. And he uses verse 4. All right. Verse 4 says here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, now, here's the whole thing. Verse 3, the man of sin being revealed, the son of perdition. Now, technically what's going on there is, because I know, you know, the, the son of perdition there, you know, that's kind of getting ahead of myself here. But the man of sin being revealed, um, Dr. Stauffer said that that's halfway through. That's not true. This is one of the errors where I would disagree with him. Um, if you go back to Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel 9, uh, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, the way I interpret that, and again, there's debate between some of the brethren on this, and, you know, let me just say this. We are talking about a future dispensation. Okay, the church age is going to end, and God's going to start dealing with the nation of Israel again. The time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Um, verse 24 here in Daniel chapter 9. So, we are not going to have perfect knowledge of what's going on in that time period. And that's not really what this debate is about, that we want to be right on a future dispensation. Where the debate comes in at is when is the rapture the approximate time? We're not date setting or anything else. That's heretics that do that. But we're saying is it, do we are, are we gone before the time Jacob's trouble starts or midway through or at the end or whatever? That's where the debate comes in here. Okay. That's what's important here. But notice in verse 27, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Right? Who confirms the covenant at the beginning that starts, essentially, starts this time in Jacob's trouble? That would be the Antichrist. He confirms the covenant. Doesn't sign a peace treaty. He confirms a covenant. If you, you know, saw my study on that, I do believe that this covenant is not going to be between Jews and Arabs. I believe it's going to be between the Jews and the Roman Catholics. Right? They're the ones that are already over there trying to hash out the differences of who controls the city of Jerusalem. That's going to be very important. The rebuilding of the third temple. Who gets to sit in that third temple? They're already debating back and forth what they're going to have with this thing. Uh, you're not going to get a, a peace treaty between Jews and Muslims. Right? That, that doesn't even make any sense. Um, that's been taught for so long, people have fallen for it and they believe it and they think, oh, I guess that makes sense. Look at the scriptures, look at the arguments. Um, it doesn't make one bit of sense, prophetically speaking. Um, but you see there, the Antichrist confirms the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. It's talking about the same man. He confirms the covenant, and in the midst of the week, the same man, he calls it the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And if you study it out, that's when he sits himself up in the temple claiming to be God. And if, you know, again, you do the study 
I believe halfway through, there's an assassination attempt on him, and his right eye is darkened, and he's basically dead. And three and a half days later, he, he uh, you know, makes a satanic counterfeit of what Jesus Christ did, and he rises from the dead. And all the world wonders after the beast, Revelation chapter 13. So you have the Antichrist showing up at the beginning, confirming the covenant. Halfway through, he gets assassinated, is resurrected now as, you know, again, you can look into this thing, the son of perdition, you know, uh, this is like a big study, so I can't get into a huge thing on it right now, but the son of perdition there, um, you know, is another name for Judas Iscariot. You know, God, you know, Lord Jesus gives him the sop, S-O-P, son of perdition, you know, and he's, he's actually referred to as the son of perdition, and Jesus says, Has, have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil, you know, Judas Iscariot dies and he goes to his own place. In Revelation chapter 9, I believe it is, it talks about this angel of the bottomless pit that's called, in Greek, I think it's Apollyon, in Hebrew, Abaddon. You know, and the theory is there that this spirit is going to come out and indwell the body, the dead body of the Antichrist, and he's going to rise up and he's going to be basically this powerful, demonic, you know, man at that point in time. So to say the Antichrist doesn't show up, until halfway through the tribulation, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, properly called, that doesn't work. And another reason it does not work is found over in Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, uh, verses 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right, and I believe that that is the satanic counterfeit of Jesus Christ, comparing Revelation 6, 1 and 2 with Revelation chapter 19. The Antichrist counterfeits Jesus Christ. And so you have all these people, you know, saying that we're currently in the tribulation, and America is Babylon, and all this other stuff, and... and so when the Antichrist actually shows up after the body of Christ is gone, they're going to be here and they're going to be going, Jesus has returned. See, he's on a white horse. <laughs> you know, the whole deal. But that's why I don't believe this thing of, you know, Second Thessalonians, you can go back there, chapter 2, um, verse 4, that that's when the Antichrist shows up. Uh, no, um, there's some time differences here. And that is... Verse 2, if you saw the other video, the day of Christ, I believe, is referring to the second coming. In this unique passage here, it's referring to the second coming. Please watch the other video uh, if you haven't seen that and why I believe that. Um, and the second coming is not going to happen uh, before a falling away first, the apostasy, the departure from the faith, and the man of sin being revealed. Okay, And then it jumps ahead three and a half years to when he sets himself up in the temple. He causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease and sets himself up in the temple to be worshipped. Okay, So verse 4 is happening three and a half years after verse 3. All right. Verse 5, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Okay, Referring back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Watch the other study on that. But now here's where we need to get into this thing. Verse 6. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. All right. Now, again, uh, Peter Ruckman taught on this thing that the he might be revealed in his time is the Antichrist might be revealed in the son of perdition's time. All right. In other words, uh, the Antichrist shows up first as just basically a man, and then later on he comes back as this devil incarnate in the flesh. So. There's a withholding there that the Antichrist is not going to be revealed in the man of sin there, the son of perdition, you know, in his time. Um, uh, I don't believe that way. It doesn't work. For the mystery of iniquity, verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? Now, what Ruckman does with that is he says, we'll see, the Antichrist there is verse 7. He's taken out of the way, and then the wicked is revealed. All right, the son of perdition, halfway through. 
Um, well, I'd like to point out the obvious fact that the Antichrist is not taken out of the way. It's the same man. He's resurrected. All right. So uh, to, to stretch that text and say, well, see, the Antichrist is there the first three and a half years, then he gets assassinated and he's taken out of the way, and then the wicked is revealed, Apollyon, Abaddon, the spirit there, coming into the man. Uh, you're stretching it. You're stretching that. Okay. Um, I don't believe that way. Uh, Doug Stauffer's way of saying this is verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. All right. And now he's saying it's Michael the archangel is the his time there. The Antichrist is not going to be revealed in his time because if you go over to Revelation chapter 12, and, you know, I love Ruckman and, and, you know, I don't have a problem with what stuff or, you know, a lot of what he does and stuff too. So I'm not, I'm not calling either man a heretic. I'm just saying I disagree on this point. Um, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Um, you know, and basically he's saying that this happens halfway through. So Michael and his angels are the, you know, thing that's there. They are the, the um, hindrance there that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay, so Michael and... and the archangel is the one who is hindering the Antichrist from showing up halfway through. But then you have the problem of Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. How do you have him being there at the beginning to confirm the covenant, and then three and a half years later, he causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease? If the Antichrist isn't revealed till halfway through, well, who's the guy that's doing the first three and a half years? That doesn't work. Okay? I don't believe that. So let me show you what I believe and what I've taught for many years. Okay, verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Two key words here. Okay, I'll just write 2 Thessalonians 2. Okay, and we'll go with verse 6. There are two key words here. Okay, you have he and his time. Okay, now, Ruckman says he is the Antichrist, or excuse me, I'll say he would be the son of perdition, his time would be the Antichrist. He's not going to be revealed Son of Perdition is not going to be revealed in his time, the Antichrist time, the first three and a half years. I've already showed you why that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, Doug Stauffer would say his theory there is the he would be um, the Antichrist is not going to be revealed in his time, Michael the Archangel. Again, I don't think that that's going to work either. Uh, the Antichrist is going to show up certainly at the beginning to confirm the covenant. Uh, he can't just show up right in the halfway mark and stuff like that. Uh, I don't believe that way. So what do I believe? Now you know what withholdeth that he, the Antichrist, might be revealed in his time. Who's the his time? Jesus. Christ. You say, what are you talking about? What time period are we in right now? Dispensationally speaking, we are in the church age. What is the church? The body of Christ. Okay? Paul's on the road to Damascus. Saul at the time. And he's attacking the church and everything else. And what does the Lord say? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? No, he's, he's attacking the church, you see. Paul never, you know, Saul never attacked Jesus Christ. He's, he only attacked Christians. No, he attacked Jesus Christ. Why? We're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. We're one with Jesus Christ. 
we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You attack me, you're attacking an extension of Jesus Christ. Okay, you see how that thing works? So the he there, he might be revealed in the Antichrist, might be revealed in his time, the time of the church, Jesus Christ. There's something withholding the Antichrist from showing up during the church age. You see? Look at verse 7. Look at a few more key words here. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. All right? So, what do we have here? Uh, let's see how I want to divide this up. Um, okay. We'll start with mystery of iniquity. Now it's fairly easy to figure out who that is. We have, I'm just going to write AC. You know what I'm talking about there, okay? The Antichrist. I'm not talking about air conditioning, okay? <laughs> uh, air conditioners aren't the mystery of iniquity. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have mystery of iniquity. He who now letteth will let. Okay, so I'll go down here and I'll say, He who now letteth. All right, we'll get back to that in a minute. Until he be taken out of the way. He be taken. All right, out of the way. Now, what's going on here? He who now letteth. The mystery of iniquity is already working, but something is hindering. Letting. Again, if you don't understand the, the word there, it's not an archaic word, because tennis, they hit the ball, if it hits the net, they say let. It's called let. What happened? The net hindered the ball from getting to the other person. This is not an archaic word. Okay, don't let anybody tell you it is. So what's the hindrance there? Well, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. You see, but, but oh, I'm the, just bear with me. Please bear with me. Holy Spirit. Okay? He who now letteth. The Holy Spirit is hindering. All right? The Holy Spirit can do things. He's, he's omnipresent. He's other places where we can't see what's going on. Um, I'll tell you right now, there's many, many times I've put out videos and the Holy Spirit will take the thing. I didn't. I think oh, I did a terrible job at that or whatever. And the Holy Spirit will take that video and it affect the right people. And I've seen Catholics getting saved and all kinds of things happening. And I'm just going like, okay, that's really wild. What, what's going on? The Holy Spirit is doing things. The Holy Spirit puts it into the minds of Christians to expose what the mystery of iniquity is doing. The mystery of iniquity is already working. What is it? The Roman Catholic Church. The seat of the Antichrist that's coming. All right, they come out with something. I saw, uh, I did this thing um, about the, the young pope and things like this, uh, this HBO, I think it's HBO, that it brought out this sick, disgusting show. And they're basically preparing its... You know, predictive programming for the Antichrist showing up because I do believe he's going to be a young, attractive man. It's funny how they're setting up all these young, attractive men in political positions. You know, I just saw the, uh, what's the, uh, Chancellor of Austria, um, Sebastian Kurz, I think his name is, or Kurtz, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but a uh, young guy, 31 years old, you know, trained Roman Catholic, University of Vienna. Check it out. Um, then you have uh, Emmanuel Macron, President of France, trained by the Jesuits. I'm not making it up. Okay? Interesting. What are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to get the kings set up that are going to follow with the Antichrist, and I believe the Antichrist is going to be a young man. But, And uh, one of you post posted in the comments about uh, the season premiere for the um, young pope the newest season premiere, and it, it, you were like, it's just so disgusting. I watched the thing. Oh, it was, it was, it was so foul. It's this little naked baby crawling up over a pile of dead babies, and the Pope comes up out of the ground in front of the pile, and then he walks out 
into the, you know, like it's, I think it's St. Peter's Basilica, you know, the thing out there. And you see him and he's just like looking and it's like it shows his one eye and it's red. And then behind him you see this pile of dead babies. And I'm thinking those people ought to be locked up that are making this thing. What's going on? The mystery of iniquity is already working, you see. They're already preparing the way for the Antichrist to show up. But the Holy Spirit helps Christians to do the work of the Lord right now. And we're exposing this stuff and we're preaching against it and things. We're waking Catholics up. Dear Catholic people are getting saved. They're getting out of that satanic system. There are Catholics that are looking at this and they're going, what is this? This is disgusting. I mean, if the Catholic Church was real, they'd be saying to the producers of, of this young pope, they'd be saying, we're going to take you to court and sue your pants off. You're doing some really foul things and trying to make us look bad. This is defamation of character and whatever else. The Catholic Church isn't doing it. Mystery of iniquity. They're already working. The Holy Spirit is the one that's hindering this thing. So you say, but wait a second though, Brian. We got you here because how can the Holy Spirit be taken out of the way when He is omnipresent? Exactly. Very good point. So then what is this? Until He be taken out of the way. Who is the He that's taken out of the way? That'd be Jesus Christ. You see? Right there. Right now we are in His time. The body of Christ. Until He be taken out of the way. I mean, if Jesus Christ is the one who's opening the seals in heaven, how would He open the seal in heaven in Revelation chapter 6, verse 1? He's found worthy in Revelation chapter 5. And He's going to open the seals and pour out these judgments on Himself? How does that make any sense at all? It doesn't. So what do we have in verse 7? The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Antichrist. Only he who now letteth, the Holy Spirit, will let until he, Jesus Christ, be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. You see? You say, well, how do you know? How do, this is just your interpretation. Read Revelation chapter 5 and Revelation chapter 6. And again, you know, oh, well, you know, you can only prove that John and the 24 elders are up there. We'll just, we'll just say that the angels aren't Christians. We'll just say John and the 24 elders, okay, they're there. But John was just caught up to see things and stuff like this. And it wasn't really symbolic of the rapture and things, you know, even though there's the trumpet that talks with him, a voice, as it were, a trumpet talking with him. And uh, Jesus says, my sheep hear my name, or I, I call my sheep by name. They hear my voice. I am the door. John looks up. He sees a door open in heaven. It's all there. But let's just say it's John and the 24 elders, and that's it. No other Christians. Christians are going through it and whatever else. Uh, why show favoritism to those 25 men? John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, he gets some kind of a thing, I guess a special sneak preview. But what about the 24 elders? You mean to tell me the Lord resurrects 24 elders, gives them their glorified bodies, they get to experience 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the thing of corruptible putting on incorruption, verses 51 through 58, but the rest of us have to stay down here on the earth. So you get the body of Christ partly in heaven with the 24 elders and partly on the earth. That makes no sense at all. You see, the way you interpret Scripture is these events here have to line up with what goes on in Revelation, and it lines up perfectly, what I just told you. The Antichrist is being hindered by the Holy Spirit until He is taken out of the way, the body of Christ. He, the Antichrist, cannot be revealed in His time, the time of Jesus Christ, the church age. Do you understand? I really wish all this nonsense talk would just stop among the body of Christ because what it's doing is you're, you're casting doubt on the passage here and you're saying, you're putting doubts in people's mind. Well, well, if, if the Antichrist isn't revealed till halfway through or, or till the, the Son of Man or the, you know, the, the, excuse me, the Son of Man, the man of sin is not revealed until, you know, later in the, and then that's the son of perdition and the, and, the, and, the, and, you, and you start having Christians going, what if we see the Antichrist? 
what if we're going to be here to see the revelation of the Antichrist? The next logical step, brethren, is if you're here to see the Antichrist, there's a good possibility you're going to be here also to take the mark of the beast, or at least to have that thing offered to you. And if any Christian, any Christian is here to see the mark of the beast being ordered out there, no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. Okay? If any Christian is here to see that, then there's a possibility that you can lose your salvation, making God a liar. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. You see the problem? You mess around with this text here, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 6 and 7, and you start to mess around with it and, and, and twist it into something that it does not say. And now there's a possibility that you could be here. Maybe we'll see the Antichrist. I think it's possible. Or you just you might as well just throw out your Bible. God cannot lie unless we're here to see the Antichrist. Or you could actually just read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 and compare it to Revelation chapter 5 and Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 5, there's Christians in heaven, physically in heaven. They're not called souls. They're physically there in heaven. Redeemed saints. Okay? I'm going to do another little video here after this one's done. I'm going to do another little video on who the 24 elders are. This is crystal clear. There's no debate. Okay? But I'll do that in just a little bit here. You got blood redeemed saints in heaven in Revelation chapter 5. The body of Christ is in heaven. His time is over. You see? He was taken out of the way. And then the Antichrist is revealed. The mystery of iniquity is already working. They're already building this thing. They're already putting out their propaganda things like the young Pope. But the Holy Spirit's stopping them. The Holy Spirit is stopping this Roman Catholic takeover of the world right now. We have a tremendous opportunity as Bible-believing Christians. A lot of our ancestors, so to speak, spiritual ancestors, our brothers and sisters of the past, uh, went through some really bad stuff at the hand, hands of the uh, mystery of iniquity system. They went through some real bad times. The Lord's given us a great opportunity here. I, I mean, the Catholics are going to take over before the rapture? Possibly. But I'll tell you one thing, it isn't going to happen. I'm not going to see the Antichrist. I'm not going to see him. He's not going to be revealed in his time, the time of Jesus Christ. Okay? So you don't want to you want to disagree about that? Well, okay, but you're going to have a whole lot of doctrinal issues if you disagree with this right here. And no glory to me, whatever, you know. Uh, you, you believe this, you don't have to call yourself a Denlingerite or something like that. I mean, whatever. It's just what the Bible teaches. You compare this to what goes on over in Revelation 5 and Revelation chapter 6. Blood redeemed Christians in heaven, Revelation chapter 5. Well, they get caught up in Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 5, they're there, blood redeemed Christians. Revelation chapter 6, the Antichrist is revealed. Lines up perfectly here. Okay? So that is going to be it. I'm going to come back in the next video and talk about who the 24 elders are.